Welcome to another Polkadot tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to explain what you can do after staking. This video specifically focuses on how you can change your staking preferences using the Polkadot staking dashboard. This video is also part of a series of previous videos about how to nominate, join a pool, and also understand how to use the staking dashboard. Before diving into today's tutorial, if you find these videos helpful, please hit the like and subscribe buttons below as this will help other people to find our content. And if there is something that we didn't cover yet and you're interested in, drop us a message. And here we are on the Polkadot staking dashboard. We are currently connected to an RPC node on the Kusama network. And we can see we're currently nominating and we are also a member of a pool. We first focus on the menu nominate we can see that uh, we have 0.1 KSM that are bonded and we can try now to top up our balance and bond more funds by clicking on the plus button. We can choose if you want to bond extra funds and we can specify how many tokens we would like to bond or actually bond all the tokens in the account. We click on bond extra and here we can specify the amount of tokens. After specifying the amount of tokens, we can uh, see that uh, transaction fees have been deducted from the maximum bond. And also here we can uh, see an estimate of the fees that we will pay. We can click on submit. The Polkadot browser extension will display some details about uh, the current extrinsic that we are signing. In here, we can uh, just put the password in order to sign for uh, this transaction. After typing the password, you can click sign the transaction and uh, we actually increase the amount of bonded funds to 0.2 KSM. We can also decide to unbond funds by clicking on the minus here. And similarly, as uh, bonding more funds, we can unbond some funds or unbond all the funds. In this case, we will just unbond some of uh, our tokens. We can specify the amount of tokens we would like to unbond. And we can see here a message, once unbonding, you must wait 28 eras for your funds to become available. So after these 28 eras, your funds will be free to, to be claimed and uh, you can actually transfer these funds and, uh, and use them for different activity on chain. We can click on submit. The browser extension will display once again details about this uh, transaction and uh, we can sign. We can click sign the transaction and we can see now we have 0.15 KSM. So we don't have 0.2 KSM anymore. And we have uh, here a lock with uh, the number one. We can click on this and uh, we can see that uh, we have 0.05 KSM that will be unlocked in 28 eras. And uh, actually 28 eras on Kusama correspond to seven days while on Polkadot, 28 days. During the unbonding period, we can also decide to rebond the amount of tokens that are unbonding. To do it, just click on rebond. We can see we can rebond 0.05 KSM and uh, we can see the transaction fees for this action. We can click on submit and to rebond the tokens, we can use the controller account. We can uh, put the password of this account here to sign for this transaction. And we can click sign the transaction. And we can see that now we have again 0.2 KSM that are bonded. Another thing we can do is to change the reward destination. In this uh, specific example, now is the controller account. So the rewards that we are earning will be paid to, the, to this account. We can change this by clicking on update and we have different options. Here we can choose to update our current choice from um, having the controller account as a, a reward destination to having uh, the rewards be paid to the stash account, but uh, they will be, um, be bonded. So they will um, actually participate to staking. Or we can also pay the rewards to the stash account, but they will not be contributing to staking. So this will be a free balance on the stash account. In this case, we can um, select uh, this option and we can click on submit. The browser extension again will display some details and we can uh, sign using the controller account. We can see that the reward destination now is updated to stash account. Next, we can also change the controller account by click here on change. The staking dashboard will give us uh, some uh, possibilities depending on the accounts that we have on the browser extension. 
In this case, we can see that we have uh, a controller account that we can choose and we can click on submit. And uh, in this case, changing the controller is signed by the stash. It's not signed by the controller account. We can sign this transaction with uh, the password for this account and we can click sign the transaction. And now the new controller account is uh, KSN controller dash one. You notice already that uh, we use different account to sign for different things. Specifically, we use the stash account to bond more funds and to change the controller why we use the controller account for all other staking related transactions. This is basically to keep the stash account as isolated as possible, but we're still using it for some of the staking related transaction. You can learn how to make the stash account even more isolated, for example, by using staking proxies. And you can see the link in the description below if you are interested in doing so. Another thing that we can do is to change our nomination. Remember that uh, nominating on Polkadot is not a set and forget action. You need to track the performance of uh, your validators. And it might be the case that sometimes you need uh, to change your validators because uh, maybe they change the commission fee, so they make it very high and uh, you, don't, you don't receive uh, enough rewards or actually you can also stop to receive rewards if the commission is 100%. So how we can uh, change our nominations you can click on select, you can select specific validators and you can choose to stop nominating these selected validators. So stop two nominations, click on submit. You can see we can use the controller account for this type of operation. Note that this time is the controller dash one, not uh, the controller dash because we changed the controller account. Click sign the transaction and the validators that we selected, they are no more here. When we select some validators, we can also choose to cancel. So this will cancel the selection. We can also decide to completely stop our nominations. In this case, we will stop all the nominations. We can click on uh, submit. We can sign the transaction with the controller account. And here we go, we stop nominating. If you want to nominate again, we can uh, select different options. We can use uh, this type of selections that are built in. If you click under optimal selection, we will be able to get a um, selection of a mix of majority active and inactive validators. We can uh, decide to regenerate this selection and um, the algorithm will uh, resample different validators. We can also decide to add additional validators from our favorites list and uh, we can select one of them and click add favorite to nominations, we can see it here. Then we can add a parachain validator, an active validator, or a random validator. We can cancel the selection here. This other built-in selection will select a set of active validators with low commission. As before, we can regenerate and we can add different validators. We can also directly add validators from the favorites list in here or we can do a manual selection and the manual selection will allow us to add from favorites like this add a parachain validator an active validator a random validator or we can also select and cancel some of them and we can build our selection like this in this case, we just go for optimal selection. We click on nominate, we click on submit. We can sign with the controller account. And uh, here we have our nominations. Note how now that we change our nominations, we can see that uh, we are waiting for active nominations. We don't have any active nominations, but this is not actually true. We are still nominating. It's just that uh, the active nominator uh, is no more in our um, nominations. So what we can do to prove that is uh, we can go under validators. We can go and search for the validator that uh, was active. When we find it, we can uh, give it a heart. We will find this validator in the favorites list. Go back to nominate. Go on uh, add from favorites. This is the one we need. We can uh, submit this transaction. We will sign with the controller account, sign the transaction. The validator that we were uh, earning rewards with, it's still there. 
we can see that is active, 0.1 KSM. The status changed to nominating and earning rewards. And here we can see we have one out of 17 active nominations. So remember that uh, even if you change your nomination and the active validator is no more there, you're still earning rewards with that validator. We can see that we have three types of status for the validators. It, they can be active, they can be waiting, and they can be inactive. Active, it means that this is the validator that uh, we are bonding our funds to, and that we are actually earning rewards with this validator in this current era. While inactive, it means that this is a validator that we are not bonding funds with, but uh, they are producing blocks and somebody else will probably earn rewards with this um, validator in this era. While waiting validator are those that are not active and not producing blocks in the current era. Remember that to earn rewards with uh, a specific validator, you need to be in the top 256 nominators. And these nominators are ranked by stake, which means that if you are not able to have uh, enough tokens to be within these 256 nominators, you will not be able to earn the rewards even if uh, your um, nomination is active. A validator that has more than 256 nominations is uh, oversubscribed. To know if you are in the top 256 nominators, usually you will see a sign in, uh, in here. In this case, we are on Kusama, so currently there are no oversubscribed validators. But if we go to Polkadot, we can see, for example, here, Suk Capital, there is a sign, oversubscribed, minimum reward bond is 252 dots, which means that you need at least 253 dots to be considered within the 256 um, nominators. If you have this uh, amount of tokens, you will be able to, be, um, to earn rewards. But for example, even if you have 250 dots, you will not be able to earn rewards in this era. But the minimum amount of tokens to earn rewards with a specific validator, it changed with, uh, with the validator. For example, here we can see that we have 252, but here, for example, we have 287. So we'll actually need much more tokens in order to earn the rewards. If you want to know the so-called minimum active bond, across all the validators that you need to earn rewards in a specific era, you need to go under nominate and you can see it here. So in this case on Polkadot, you need 191 dots in order to earn rewards in uh, this specific era. And actually this might not be true. You can have more than 191 dot and still not earning rewards. Next, we can um, go to payout and we can see in here, we just started nominating a couple of days ago and uh, we can see the first rewards that uh, have been paid and uh, the different validators that contributed to our rewards. We can now go to the menu pools. We are member of a pool. This is pool number 10. Like we did for nominating, we can bond more funds we can bond extra and bond all. Or we can also unbond some of the funds or unbond to minimum to maintain the pool membership. We can also decide to leave the pool and leaving the pool will uh, automatically trigger the, um, the withdrawal of uh, the rewards that we have. So in here we can see that we have unclaimed rewards. We can decide to withdraw the rewards or bond, again, these rewards in the pool. In this case, we can click on uh, withdraw. We can submit. We can see for this type of transaction, we are signing with the stash and not the controller. We can see we don't have unclaimed rewards anymore. And uh, we can also decide to leave the pool. So we have this 0.05 KSM that uh, we can unbond. We click on submit. We are signing again with the stash account. It is important to understand that now that we have unbonded the funds, we have to wait for 28 days. So there is even not an option to rebond the funds 
At this uh, stage, we just uh, have to wait these seven days on Kusama and 28 days on uh, Polkadot. And after that, we can unlock the funds and we can join another pool. Also, we can join only one pool at a time, which means that when we leave a pool, we need to wait these 28 eras. Then we have to unlock the funds and only then we are able to join another pool. All right, I hope you learned something today about uh, what to do after staking using the Polkadot staking dashboard. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in another video.